Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scudabuyo playing vanilla Minecraft Snapshot 15W50A of the upcoming release of 1.9 PC Edition and this is the second in a sequence of videos in which I attempt to explain the mechanics of Minecraft liquids. Uh, in this video I'll be talking about the block states of water and lava. I'll also be talking about the two different forms of both water and lava uh, and uh, as a prelude to the next video I'll also briefly categorize the way in which liquids interact with other blocks. Uh, first, I'd like to thank everyone who let me know their preference for shorter or longer videos. Uh, it seems that the consensus is for shorter videos as long as they're not just like a, a bullet point. So I'll do my best to keep them relatively short yet filled with some varied content. Um, this one probably is going to end up being somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes. Um, the other one may be slightly longer, but uh, I'll probably try. I'll try to keep the others a little bit shorter. Uh, okay, on to block states. Um, uh, both water and lava have a, uh, an associated data value which is reflected as a block state called level. Uh, don't get too caught up with the semantics of the word level. It's really a bit of a misnomer. Uh, as the uh, level goes up, the rendered level of the water actually goes down until you get to falling water, in which case it's the opposite. And uh, yeah, it's confusing, I know. Uh, so although you uh, you may see this uh, uh, this number uh, referred to as the level or the depth, uh, I'll try to just simply call it the data value. Uh, now, water with a data value of zero is a, a source block, of course, um, and a water source block is a block from which all other non-source water ultimately spreads, either horizontally or vertically. Uh, if you isolate the source, uh, all of the other water uh, from uh, from which it spreads will dissipate, uh, and just as simple as that. So. Uh, now, water with a data value between 1 and 7 inclusively, uh, um, that's spreading water. And you might see this referred to as flowing water, um, but that's also the name of a block, so I'm reserving that term in order to avoid confusion. I'll, I'll call this spreading water. Uh, as water spreads horizontally further from its source, its data value increases. Uh, and uh, the data value of a block of spreading water is always one more than the least data value of adjacent source water or spreading water uh, up to a maximum of 7. Uh, so uh, this water here has a data value of 5, uh, and that's because it's one more than the minimum of 4 and 6, uh, the data values of its adjacent water. Uh, this means that water can spread uh, seven blocks, uh, um, uh, up to seven blocks from a source block, uh, and the rate at which it spreads is about one block every five game ticks. Uh, that is a function of a tile tick delay, which is something I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, of course, that is in the overworld and the end only, um, uh, the, since there's no water in the nether. Uh, but in case you're wondering, in those rare cases when a glitch has allowed water in the nether, uh, the spread mechanics have been the same as in the overworld. Uh, water with a data value between 8 and 15 is falling water. Um, and um, uh, here you see that I've labeled all of these as 8+. Uh, I'm not making a differentiation between these values because they're all treated identically by the game. Uh, just in case you're wondering, technically speaking, um, the data value of all this falling water is 15 because it's 8 more than the uh, water from which it falls. Uh, okay, so um, let's see. Uh, falling water uh, will continue uh, to create falling water beneath it until it uh, reaches a liquid obstructing block, like this uh, glass down here, uh, at which point it will begin spreading horizontally again, beginning with a data value of 1. Now in the nether, uh, lava works very much the same as water in the overworld, uh, but it does have a different rate of, sp uh, uh, rate of spread. Um, instead, um, it's going to be one block about every 10 game ticks. Uh, now I don't have an exact number for this, um, uh, because I haven't, um, I haven't worked out the tile tick delay exactly, but it's approximately one block every, every 10 game ticks. Um, that's about three times the speed of lava in the overworld, uh, but about half the speed of water. Um, the other difference between uh, nether lava and overworld lava, of course, is the distance it can spread. Uh, in lava in the nether can spread the same distance, wa distance as water, uh, which is eight blocks if you include the source block. Um, and, but lava in the overworld can spread only half the dif distance, uh, four blocks if you include the source block, and that is because uh, lava in the overworld uh, only uses data values that are even numbers, so 0, 2, 4, 6, uh, and even all of the falling lava technically has uh, data values that are only even numbers. 
Now, uh, both water and lava actually have two different forms, uh, flowing and still. Uh, flowing water and uh, um, still water and flowing lava and still lava, they all have different uh, block IDs um, and the range of data values applies uh, both to flowing and uh, still liquids. Uh, unfortunately, the terms flowing and still are also misnomers, uh, at least from a player's perspective. Uh, flowing water, for example, uh, um, is block 8 and it may look as though it's still and still water, uh, which is block 9, may look as though it's flowing. Now, I prefer to think of flowing water as updating water and still water as stable water, uh, but I'll stick with flowing water and still water as terms ju just as a matter of conformity. Uh, now, basically, uh, flowing water is water that is in an active state of being updated regardless of whether it appears to be flowing, and you see this when you place a, uh, a water source block uh, on the ground with a bucket. Right, the, the water is uh, spreading, it's possibly combining with other water, um, the, uh, the levels are changing, the orientation of the current is changing, and so on. Um, shortly thereafter, uh, however, the, activi uh, the activity settles down, uh, there's no blocks of water that are changing, uh, you know, there's this uh, flow that's being rendered, uh, but uh, the flow isn't being adjusted anymore, um, the levels aren't changing, the water's not spreading anymore. Uh, at that point, all the water is still water, uh, e even though, of course, it, it looks like it's flowing. Let me get rid of these here. Uh, okay, so uh, the high-level algori algorithm is basically this. Uh, when a block of still water uh, receives a block update, it converts from a block of still water to a block of, of flowing water. Let me uh, put down a uh, block of still water here. Now, uh, still water is, um, uh, uh, flow well, flowing water in, uh, is, uh, has the name uh, flowing underscore water. Uh, still water has the, just the name water. <laughs> I set it right underneath myself. Let me try that again. Um, here we go. Yes, I, I know how to use tab completion. Okay, so uh, I set a block of water. Um, that's now a block of still water. Uh, and um, when, I, uh, when I give this a block update, uh, it is going to, um, it is actually going to convert uh, to a block of flowing water. And, and there are a number of different ways in which you can give this a block update. You know, uh, I'm gonna place a block next to it. Uh, it can receive a redstone signal. Or there can be a red, uh, you know, powered block next to it. Um, but um, uh, it's going to convert to then to flowing water. Okay. Now, both still water and flowing water look the same, so there's no immediate visual indicator of the conversion, uh, but uh, once the conversion occurs, a tile tick is scheduled for the block of flowing water. Uh, essentially, a tile tick is like a delayed block update, and many tile ticks are often a culprit of lag. Uh, that's why a large amount of shifting water can cause lag. If you've got lots of updating water, that will cause lots of tile ticks, and that will likely continue for many game ticks until all, all the flowing water either is converted to still water or dissipates. Uh, anyway, um, the, uh, the initial delay on a tile tick that is scheduled for a block of flowing water is five game ticks, and, and incidentally, that's why water flows at a rate of one block per five game ticks. Uh, when the delay on the tile tick expires, uh, the block of flowing water is updated. Uh, that was this one uh, where I placed the block next to. Uh, and um, uh, if possible, additional flowing water is going to spread. So uh, we had water spread in, in these uh, squares right here. Uh, and, and, um, and then the, the algorithm is actually going to be applied recursively to these new blocks of flowing water. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why, uh, why water can, uh, can cause so many tile ticks. You know, you, um, just a, a single source block of water can actually cause hundreds or even more uh, uh, tile ticks. So. Uh, all right, um, in, in addition to uh, spreading, uh, the properties of this uh, flowing water are going to need to be updated. Um, the, the level may change uh, or, um, uh, or the orientation of the flow, uh, of, the, uh, of the rendered flow may change. Uh, and that's going to be in accordance with the properties of adjacent water blocks, uh, including any adjacent water blocks that have just spread. Uh, if um, uh, if water blocks spread from uh, uh, from the flowing water, or if the, its properties were updated, 
uh, another uh, tile tick is going to be scheduled for that, so it's going to be updated again in another five game ticks. Uh, if, on the other hand, no more water spreads from the block of flowing water, and if no properties are modified, uh, then the block of flowing water instead converts to a block of still water, and uh, the cycle of life is complete. Uh, this um, uh, Now, this is all going to happen relatively fast. Uh, <laughs> it, it happens much faster than, uh, than I can describe it. Um, but um, I think it's after just two or three um, uh, tile tick delays, that this block uh, goes from uh, still water when I place the block next to it uh, to flowing water and then back again to still water. So it, it happens in all in less than a second. It's pretty fast, uh, but again, it, it does add up. If you've got lots and lots of shifting water, you are going to see some lag uh, because of all the tile ticks that are being generated from it. Uh, Alright, the, um, the difference between uh, flowing water and still water is mostly technical detail, uh, though it does manifest in a couple of weird ways. Uh, we can guess that water or lava placed by a bucket is flowing, since it spreads almost as soon as, it, uh, as, soon as it's placed. Um, and the same thing happens with uh, broken ice. When you break a block of ice, it's replaced by block 8, uh, which is flowing water, and it will spread after that uh, tile tick delay. Uh, but not with melted ice. Uh, melted ice is replaced by block 9, uh, and <laughs> that is what is allow, uh, allows us to make crazy sculptures like this. Um, uh, the, um, uh, here I've, I've just uh, made this outline with ice and uh, made sure that it melted, uh, and uh, as it melts, um, all, of the, um, uh, all of the blocks uh, of ice get turned into block 9. That's still water, not flowing water. As a consequence, they're not going to be receiving those, uh, uh, those tile ticks. And so they're not going to update until they receive a block update, you know, such as placing a block next to them. Uh, so as, as long as I don't uh, do anything silly, like placing a block next to this water, uh, it will stay in the shape. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, another manifestation of the um, uh, of the difference between flowing liquid and still liquid is the occasional glitch that you can find when a generated structure intersects a body of liquid. Uh, so single block springs of water and lava generate as flowing, uh, but bodies of water and lava generate as still. So uh, when a generated structure intersects a body of liquid, it doesn't cause block updates to the liquid, and the liquid then doesn't flow into the generated structure. So it, it seems like it's held back by some invisible force. All right, uh, speaking of holding back liquids, um, the, uh, the general rule is that a solid block will obstruct the spread of liquids. Um, in uh, subsequent videos, I'm going to be representing obstructing, uh, liquid obstructing blocks with black stained glass. Uh, on the other hand, um, uh, the general rule is that a non-solid block will not obstruct the spread of liquids, and I'll represent non-obstructing blocks as clear glass. Uh, now, um, uh, I've uh, listed the exceptions up here. Uh, each of these item frames uh, contains an exception. Uh, these here are all non-solid blocks that do obstruct liquids. So signs, banners, sugar canes, and any kind of pressure plate. Uh, um, water is going to flow around them or just not going to be able to flow into their space. Uh, and each of these over here is a solid block, uh, or at least a block with an otherwise non-trivial collision mask in the case of vines and cobwebs. Um, and uh, these will not act as obstructions for liquids, so uh, uh, even though they have some solidity. So water will flow into their, uh, water and lava will flow into their space. Uh, uh, now a non-obstructing block uh, will either be destroyed or drop as an item, depending on both the block and the liquid. A uh, block of air, for example, is technically destroyed when a liquid flows into it, uh, but a torch will drop as an item when replaced by water. Uh, lava instead destroys pretty much anything it, uh, uh, any um, non-obstructing block it comes into contact with. Uh, and that is it then for this video. Um, in the next video I'll be going over the mechanics of how liquids spread. Um, thanks very much for watching, and if you have any questions or suggestions please leave a note in the comments. Uh, also, although I always welcome corrections, please let me know if I've gotten any of the technical details here blatantly wrong, or if you have any additional information that you would like to see me incorporate in subsequent videos.